Hello alien friends, I'm Oculus, the alien next door, and today's esoteric chit chat, we are going to be discussing moon signs, astrological moon signs. So buckle up, let's see what they all mean, and thank you for subscribing, thank you for sharing this video if you feel the urge to do so, and here we go. So. What does the moon sign mean in astrology? Now, everyone is mostly familiar with the sun sign, but the moon sign is actually the feminine counterpart to the sun sign. So both of these are, I would say, equally important in astrology, but most people just know their sun sign. And there are a whole other buttload of astrological videos that I have on my channel so if you would like to watch those please go ahead they get into more signs and planets and celestial bodies and aspects and things like that so a moon sign is the feminine counterpart to the Sun whereas the Sun is what people most associate themselves with personality wise it's their driving force the masculine energy of their persona the moon sign is going to be the internal focus and the feminine aspect of their persona. And the moon sign might not be seen too commonly, especially if you don't know someone very well, because it is internal and a lot of people will not outwardly and actively express their moon sign. Of course, disclaimer, as I always say, there are always exceptions. It depends on the house that your moon is in, aspects to it, what sign it's in, all of that jazz. But typically the moon sign is not as open and flamboyant as the sun sign. So. The moon sign, what does it mean? It is our emotions. It is how when a situation occurs, this might not be our outward reaction. This is how we're going to feel on the inside, which is why I said it might not easily be shown in someone's personality. So with the moon sign, it's going to be more of an internal reflection. It's going to be how one processes their environment on an emotional standpoint. The moon is very linked with the subconscious mind because of that feminine aspect of it. And it's something in our chart that I would say, at least in Western astrology, is equally as important as the sun. We have the top three. We have sun, moon, and ascendant. Those are considered the top three. I would say midheaven is close behind on number four. So that being said, let's get into the different moons. Now, there are different elements. There are different modalities and all of that stuff. So with a fire moon sign, a fire moon sign number one is going to Aries Leo Sagittarius in case you are unsure of what a fire moon is. A fire moon is going to outwardly project emotions forward. They're a type that wants their emotions, at least on a subconscious level, to be noticed. So typically a fire moon, their inner world a lot of times intertwines with their outer world and they might not even realize that that's what they're doing but because it's fire and because fire is very notice me notice me notice me it's when you put that on a moon standpoint it's going to be like notice my emotions okay so how they feel is very outwardly projected at, at least on a subconscious level so what are the fire moons? We are going to talk about Aries moon first. We're just going to go in the zodiacal, zodiacal order. And Aries moon is a cardinal moon, cardinal fire moving energy forward. So if one has an Aries moon, they are likely going to be very temperamental. They are going to have a short fuse. They are going to want things now, 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 immediately. They are prone to having a temper tantrum. They are very a move forward type of energy. They just want to get it over with. They don't want. They don't really want to deal with hassles or annoyances or nonsense. They're very no nonsense because with their inner emotions, they're feeling so clearly i don't want this i'm not going to deal with this so it's very cut and dry with an aries moon they're active go-getters they can come off as a little harsh if someone is more sensitive to 
you know, someone speaking bluntly to them or something like that. They actually are very generous. That's a side of an Aries moon that you might not really see until you know them. They're very generous. They actually have a big compassion for someone that is close to them. They'll want to invest all their emotions in it and they'll want to go, they're going to want to go ham right away with their emotions. So they're the type of person that might fall deeply in love right away, like quick, 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 now, 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 and then they might fall deeply out of love just as quickly. The key word with an Aries moon is fast. It's movement. It's speed. It's cardinal fire. It's pushing forward. It's pushing forward. I would not call an Aries moon the type to hold a grudge just because they're the type to let their temper out and then be over it. However, the person on the receiving end of their outburst might feel differently, but that's you know, that's just the way it is. But an Aries moon, for the most part, is not going to hold on to something. They're just looking for that new next adventure to move forward, pushing forward, pushing forward. Imagine, you know, a meteor, like, zooming down to hit a planet. Like, it's just forward momentum, and it doesn't really care where it lands. It just wants to keep moving, okay? So that is a brief explanation of an Aries moon. Aries moon, when the individual is involved can actually be very loyal because they do like to have someone to have an interest in. They like to have someone to give their affection to, but they can be because they're so impulsive. They tend to be on and off a lot with their emotions. A Leo moon is fixed fire. So if you want to imagine a fixed fire, I would say think of a bonfire on the beach. That is the perfect word to describe a Leo moon. It's not going anywhere. It's kind of just building up and building up and building up and it's keeping you warm and it's staying in one place. That is what I would consider to be a Leo moon type. They're staying in one place in terms of their emotions. They are not really the type to be fickle in emotions. They can have, like all fire moons, they can have a very short fuse and a quick temper. They can want things their way all the time. They will want you to notice them, definitely. A Leo moon, when they are unevolved, can be very self-absorbed. And they can be very quick to pull the trigger on something that they might not even have all the information about. A Leo moon, because it is a fixed sign, they have a tendency to hold grudges because as I said, if you want to use that bonfire example, now you picture a bonfire and you're just getting it started and you're throwing in kindling or whatever you're throwing in there, twigs and branches and whatnot, right? You're throwing all that in. So that is how a Leo moon is taking in their emotions. It's like a bonfire. And the more things that get thrown at them, the bigger the fire is going to become. And they might not be as impulsive as an Aries moon where they'll just spit everything out at once and then be over. They're the type to take in all of their emotions and sit and sit and sit with it until they just boil over. So that's a type where I'm going to call it an explosion. An explosion out of nowhere is a Leo moon's emotions. Now, they can be sensitive, They, which can be, depending on the way you look at it, it can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing, because in a good way, they have that compassion for other people. And in a bad way, they can't, and there's no good or bad. How many times am I going to say this on this channel? There's no good or bad, but, you know, let's... We're going we're gonna to flow with it, okay? So a bad trait of a Leo moon sensitivity might be the fact that if they're not getting enough attention or they're not getting what they want when they want, then they can have a tendency to sulk. And they're the type that you would have no idea that they're even mad at you, but they'll make little emotional digs. And you're like, wait, what? Like, you wouldn't have any idea. Whereas an Aries moon, a cardinal sign, is just going to air shit out right away, right? A Leo moon is going to kind of sit and they're going to be absorbed in their emotions. Now, 
they can be very romantic because Leo in an emotional sense with a moon sign, they do like those swooping romantic gestures and they're very doting and loyal to their partner. That is a trait of Leo Moon, which is actually quite good, especially an evolved Leo Moon where they're just devoted without end and once they commit to something or someone emotionally, they're not gonna they're not gonna move because it's a fixed sign. They're gonna stay there and they're gonna try to work things out. So a Leo moon is just that bonfire. It can be warm or it can be overpowering. It just depends on how evolved that individual is. Sagittarius moon, our third fire moon, is our mutable moon sign. And again, like Aries moon, like Leo moon, Sagittarius moon is someone that you're going to notice their emotions. and. With the Sagittarius moon, they're not really trying to move forward like an Aries moon. They're not staying in one place like a Leo moon. They're kind of sporadic and they're all over the place. And I don't know why I do this dance when I talk about mutable signs, but that's kind of what it is. It's like, it's like all over, like it sways, it sways, it sways. And that's the whole purpose of mutable energy, to be open to new possibilities and new ideas and new adventures and not really projecting energy forward and not really sitting and wallowing in energy either. So a Sagittarius moon, with that being said, they can be impulsive like an Aries moon, but it's not like a full steam ahead, let's charge and let's go. No, it's not like a Rambo type of emotion coming through. It's more of like they just snap out of nowhere and a Sagittarius moon in this aspect they can have quite scary tempers and you would not think it to be so because with an Aries moon and a Leo moon you can kind of tell that there's energy built up either waiting to move forward or energy that's being stored inside just like boiling over but a Sagittarius moon because it has that immutable breezy that mutable quality right it's like something will happen and they're just like they snap and it's out of nowhere and you're like whoa so their temper is actually the least expected and because it's the least expected it can be the most frightening in the moment for someone to witness that just because you had no idea like they're just chilling there and all of a sudden it's like boom like what just happens like you will not see it coming so that's that element of surprise with the, with the Sagittarius moon's temper. Now, on the inside, they are very carefree. They like new adventures. Their emotions are open. They're not really, they don't have a closed off type of energy. They're more open to new ideas and possibilities. They love having conversations. They love enjoying to meet new people. They actually are very interested in knowing someone else's backstory so they can be great storytellers because Sagittarius Moon can tend to embellish a lot and they can also be great listeners just because they do have that genuine interest to know the other person like they want to explore emotions they want to go into the depths of it and see things that they might not know about they're always up for new experiences they are very adventurous. I think I said that. Sagittarius Moon, um, no matter where they are in their life, if they're looking for multiple partners or if they want to be monogamous, they have the capacity for both ends of the spectrum just because their emotions aren't really, they're not fixed and they're not cardinal. So they have the discernment to be with multiple emotional dealings with people in situations and they're able to compartmentalize who is who. They're not going to really push their way forward. They are going to just kind of follow the lead of what the other person is doing and because of this they can come off as not very emotionally invested even if they are just for the fact that they're so on to the next thing and then maybe they'll come back to that original thing but then you might go to a third direction do you see what i'm saying it's not 
really all or nothing. They're open to explore their emotions. Now, especially an evolved Sagittarius moon can be a great motivator. They can be a great person to go on vacation with. They can be a great person to be a motivational speaker. I don't know why that just came to mind, but because they're so open with their emotions and all the possibilities that they are they're able to accept what is thrown at them and kind of look at it with an optimistic outlook without necessarily wanting to immediately change the situation or change the person. Moving on to water moon signs. So we have Cancer, we have Scorpio, and we have Pisces. Now, water moon signs are quite at home in the moon because the moon is actually the home base, the home ruler, however you want to think of it, is Cancer, and Cancer is a water sign. The fourth house is ruled by the moon, and that's a water house. So those that have a water moon sign are actually very in touch and very in tune with their inner emotions. Now, unlike a flamboyant fire moon, this internal water moon, you most likely, unless they choose choose being the operative word unless they choose to let you into their emotions you're not going to have any way of knowing how they're feeling whatsoever you're just not okay because they know how they feel about things and they do have a deep sensitivity to the undercurrents of things around them so again this can be positive or this can be negative a positive would be a great intuition you're not going to fool them especially if they're an involved water moon you are not going to fool them because they're going to pinpoint bullshit from a mile away and on a negative note of being sensitive to their environment, sometimes they can over-dramatize their emotions internally and that can cause them to have inner conflict when maybe the situation wasn't as deep as it was. You know, it could have been a superficial thing, but because the water moon has so much depth, they're looking and looking for a deeper meaning and, you know, in certain instances, there might not be a deeper meaning. It just might be something superficial that they took personally so let's start with cancer moon the natural habitat of the moon is cancer and with these they are a cardinal moon sign so remember cardinal wants to push energy forward so in a moon sign they're going to want to push energy forward what does that mean in terms of emotion on an emotional standpoint think about someone who is reacting on the inside and then they just they took it a certain way and then they want to get back at you immediately because they feel that you wronged them or they feel that you did something to them that they did not like they are going to be the type to push that forward they can snap out of nowhere they can hold on to past traumas because even though it's a cardinal sign the moon is associated with memories and the past and things of that nature and nurturing. So if there was an instance in the past where they felt betrayed, they are going to be quick to put the pieces together and be like, oh, hell no, that's not happening ever again. And then they will immediately emotionally react to someone, which is why a cancer moon can have a quick outburst and you had no idea that that was coming. Not in a way where a Sagittarius moon would, you wouldn't see it coming. It would be, you'll feel their energy building up and then it's just like World War 17 just breaks loose out of their emotions, right? So they are very intuitive. They remember everything. So do not ever, 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 ever lie to someone that has a moon in cancer. They will know exactly what you said, how you said it, when you said it, the exact time, the date, the location, what you were wearing, who you were with, what was around, you know. They'll remember everything. They are very accustomed to remembering details of the past, especially if 
that past event meant something emotionally to them. That can be a happy memory, that can be a not so pleasant memory, but they are going to remember details. They are going to remember everything. And if something happens in the present that had triggered the Cancer Moon from the past, they are going to let you know about it right away. They're not going to hide their emotions because remember Cardinal pushing forward, pushing forward. It wants to just move forward. So a Cancer Moon in that sense, they want to move forward emotionally. So they are going to try to push your buttons just so you can say something to them so they can bring up a past event whether it had to do with you or not. Now, Cancer Moons can have excellent big hearts, especially an, an evolved Cancer Moon. They are very caring, they are very nurturing, they are very sentimental. They like to take care of their partner, they like to take care of their close loved ones. They, and again, this all has to do with aspects of the moon, the house of the moon, blah, 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 but this is general. So. A general Cancer Moon is naturally inclined to want to be an emotional caregiver, if that makes sense. They want to emotionally nourish everyone and everything around it. So they can be great with pets or children or just someone who is not really getting a lot of love and they can kind of sense that they will be the type to go over and want to comfort that person. and. They will remember someone who treated them poorly. They will remember someone who treated them amazingly. And they're not going to forget that. So I hope I, Maya Angelou, that goes, people will forget what you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. I don't even know if that's by Maya Angelou because I've seen it all over the internet and who knows who actually said these quotes they just kind of get linked up to a name and then that's what it is but they are the epitome of that quote so a cancer moon is very into that remembrance of how someone made them feel and that is their biggest strength in that sense they are going to know what they like they are going to know what they don't like and they have that defensive shell armor the crab shell around their emotions so if they actually show their vulnerable side to you do not fuck it up because they will remember that so scorpio moon is our fixed water moon sign and all of the water moons, as I said, are very intuitive. Scorpio moon, however, really wants to dive deep because it is a fixed moon sign. So when there's fixed, remember they're staying in one place. I like to think of Scorpio moon as kind of a really, really deep lake that has a frozen surface where it's all ice and then you kind of have to like break through the ice and chip away at the ice to get down into their emotions. That's how I kind of view a Scorpio moon. They are very guarded with their emotions. They, like a Cancer moon, will remember things very easily, but they're not as likely to have an emotional outburst as a Cancer moon because they're fixed. So like a Leo moon, there is a tendency to hold grudges. I don't know if I should just leave that there and walk away, but if you have a Scorpio moon, you know what I'm talking about and those grudges, they are infamous for Scorpio moon. Holding an emotional grudge. Let's think about that for a second, okay? We have fixed, we have water. So fixed emotions, what is that going to equal? That basically equals someone who is holding a grudge. So if they are scorned, if they feel that you did something to them in any way that they did not like, they are most likely going to take it very personally and they will not allow for that to happen again and they are going to keep their eye on you. Whether they're in your life or not, they are going to keep an eye on you. They are great detectives, okay? So if you're in a relationship with someone that has Moon and Scorpio and it's been established that they have feelings for you and they're devoted to you, hmm you're being watched you definitely are they have kept tabs on you they're keeping tabs on you they probably know you're watching this video right now so do not do anything to 
incriminate yourself, okay? Because it is not going to work out well for you. They are excellent detectives. They like to dive deep into emotions. They are no nonsense. They want to know the mysteries of things that you might consider to be dark and dreary and not flowers and bunnies. They want to go deep. If they're in a relationship, they want your soul. They do not want something frivolous emotionally. They want to know that you are as invested in them as they are in you. They are not going to settle for something that they don't feel they deserve. They are very loyal. An evolved Scorpio moon is very, very loyal. They will die for you. They will do anything for you, especially on an emotional standpoint. They will be your biggest supporter. They will always have your back. And that I definitely mean if a Scorpio moon loves you or is in love with you or something, if you mean something to the Scorpio moon, you have a ride or die partner. That's for sure to be down for you. They are very committed to something that they have interest in and that they believe in. And they are willing to do everything for someone that they truly care about. Pisces moon is our third water moon sign and we're bringing it home with mutable water. So as we talked about cardinal, pushing energy forward, don't know why I always do that little shark move when I say cardinal, fixed, standing in one place, mutable, sway and sway and sway and eat like that's a moon in Pisces. They are all over the place in terms of their emotions. Again, very intuitive. Pisces moon are very intuitive. They are very psychically inclined. <clears throat> they are very easily able to absorb the undercurrents of emotions, of places, of people, of animals, of a chair, of everything, because they're so psychically open to energy that everything just kind of flows to them and then if they are uninvolved they might not know how to handle that they have a tendency to confuse other people's emotions with their own this is especially especially true for pisces moon because it's mutable remember it is not pushing forward it is not staying in one place it has an open receptivity of a mutable quality, so it's open to anything. And in terms of emotions, if you're just open to anything emotionally and you just accept whatever is around you or what is given to you, in some cases, it might not be your emotion to carry. You know what I mean? It might not be your situation and you're just taking it on because you're just like, absorbing everything and i once saw a pisces moon uh a moon a pisces moon sign referred to as a psychic sponge and i think that is the perfect explanation to describe them so they are coming through they are feeling everything that's coming at them and if there's no level of discernment if they haven't evolved to decipher what belongs to them and what doesn't then they can carry other people's burdens and because of that there's a tendency to victimize themselves and they will have no idea that they're even doing that because they might not realize that they just took on someone else's issue they will have trouble differentiating it from their own psyche because they're just picking up everything so it's very important, especially for a moon in Pisces, to definitely do things to cleanse their aura and to just release negative emotions because they can pick up a lot of excess baggage if they're not careful with it. So a Pisces moon has a tendency to come off as fickle emotionally compared to the other water moons just for the fact that it has that mutable quality and it's open to everything so a pisces moon if they choose to be in multiple relationships or emotional dealings with people at once they are just open to that they're not they don't really necessarily see it as doing something wrong they're just they're kind of 
the way that they see it, if that's what they're doing, they see it as each individual has their own relationship with that moon in Pisces. So they're really not going to say one is better than the other. They're like, well, yeah, I'm involved with multiple people, but this person is, I have this dynamic with that person. I have that dynamic with this person. They're not really going to see it as negative, okay? So a Pisces moon actually when they are really interested in someone, they have a tendency to pick up on their partner's thoughts and feelings and emotions just because they're that in sync with the energy around them and being intimate with someone, obviously there's a greater chance of you establishing a bond. And a Pisces moon in a relationship will actually seem to hypnotize their partner. So if you are, in, and this sounds so crazy to say, but it, it's not like they're intentionally doing it. It's just because they're so open to the other person's energy, they're going to start mimicking the other person in a way, maybe consciously, maybe subconsciously. Remember, if someone is an aware moon in Pisces persona, they are going to use it to their advantage. They are going to know your triggers, they are going to know your emotional, even not emotional reactions, they'll even sense, like you can be sitting like a stone statue, like, and you might feel something in your energy and a Pisces moon will pick up on that, like they are that in tune, especially if they're into you, because they have that selfless quality, especially in their emotions. They see whoever they're dealing with as an extension with them. Remember, Pisces is uh, is dissolution of the ego, so they see all as one and one is all. So again, that means they can pick up emotions from other people that are not so great. But on the other hand, if they are viewing someone as themselves, then they are going to want to do everything for that other person because they feel, well, you know, but I'm doing this for me because they're me. That's kind of a way that a Pisces moon would operate if they're devoted to you. A Pisces moon can be very clairvoyant, very clairsentient, uh, more so than a Cancer moon or a Scorpio moon, just because they do have more of an openness to otherworldly things. Someone with moon in Pisces, they might come off as otherworldly. They might come off as a little spacey. They can come off as someone with their head in the clouds. They can come off as someone who is not grounded, which is kind of the same thing as head in the clouds, but you get what I'm saying. They can come off as not grounded just because their internal world is so intoxicating to them that they're just kind of in their head and in their emotions a lot. So the outer world, they might sometimes forget that it exists, if that makes sense. So. Moving along to our earth sign moons, we have Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and this is another genre of moon sign that internalize your emotions. They are not flamboyantly emotional. You might not get to see their emotional side a lot, if at all, even if they really know you because they don't really operate in the realm of deep feelings and emotions. A Earth sign moon is likely to be very logical and invested in their physical pursuits and they are likely to be very level headed just because they are grounded in the terms of dealing with their emotions. There's someone to feel something and then they'll want to look at it in a critical way. Well, why did I feel that way? What does that mean? And they'll try to interpret it that way. They're not going to necessarily first off think to feel the feeling. They are going to want to rationalize the feeling. So an earth sign moon, also a trait that I've noticed in earth sign moons is uh, because they are not that emotionally 
inclined, they it, it might be difficult to tell how into they really are, but they are someone who wants to spoil and pamper someone and take care of someone in a material sense. So they are the type to not necessarily buy you a gift on every month anniversary. They would rather give you one big gift that means something that you can use on your one year anniversary. They are not overly sentimental. They're more a practical, sentimental type of individual. They'll be the type to say, well, you know, but my partner can use this, so therefore I'm going to buy this to them to help them out because they can use that. They're not the type to just be overly cheesy with romantic gestures, and they're not the type to be cheesy and overly zealous with, you know, emotional flirtations and things like that, okay? So they can be a little hard to read in terms of their feelings for you. So we're going to get into our first earth moon, which is Taurus, which is a fixed earth moon. So what do we talk about? We said fixed, staying in one place, earth, very grounded. So a Taurus moon in a relationship, because they are ruled by Venus, they do tend to want to have that sensual side, that pleasure side with their partner. They like to indulge in activities of romance and sex and massage and all of these physical pleasures that they can experience emotionally because they're experiencing their emotions through their physical senses. So that's why they can be known as very smooth and sensual and kind of laid back but intense in a way. So Taurus, the sign in general, is known as having a bad temper. Now this calms down in the moon sign because Taurus is a feminine sign and the moon is a feminine planet. And just because it's that internal feminine nature, they wouldn't necessarily have an outward temper. Remember, this is someone who causes emotions to be logical. So again, we have that grudge holding nature of a fixed sign and especially earth, they will not budge once they make a decision. They might not have an angry outburst like a Leo moon. They might not try to get some sort of revenge on you like a Scorpio moon. They are more likely to sit and stew in it in silence and just cut you off. They are not the type to play games like that. They will tell you straightforward, this is what it is, this is what it isn't, because they just have a very blunt way of speaking the way they see it. They don't want someone to lead them on, so why would they lead someone else on? They can be very stubborn in their ideals. You are not going to get a Taurus moon to change their mind. You are not going to boss around someone that has a moon in Taurus. They are very self-sufficient. They are very self-reliable. They are willing to put in the work to achieve the emotional stability that they crave. What they essentially crave from an emotional standpoint is physical security because again this is Taurus, it's earth, it's physical. So they are likely to want to have nice things but they are also willing to work for those nice things. They are not the type to, and I'm talking about the evolved Taurus moon obviously, but they are the type to work for their posh environment. They're not just going to expect handouts. They actually can find that to be irritating if someone just expects things to be handed to them. They'll be like, that makes no sense. You don't deserve that. So they can be quite blunt in that matter. They once they are in a relationship and they have established that they have feelings for you, as I said, they're not going to be overly dramatic with emotions, but they'll maybe give you a card or they'll call to see if you got home okay or something practical of that nature. They are going to enjoy spending time with you doing physical things, like I said, couples massage or like the two of you massaging each other or whatever you're into, something that involves that sensual touch. 
they are going to be really, really about that. And a Taurus moon, because they have a tendency to be stubborn, it's best when they tell you no, not to push your agenda any further because it's going to turn them off big time. They are not going to tolerate that. They are not going to tolerate being disrespected. They are not passive emotionally. They are not the type to have a, they're not the type to create a big scene but they are definitely not passive. They will put you in your place if you try to cross them. Virgo moon is our mutable moon sign that is of Earth. And so Virgo moon, because it's mutable and it's Earth, it's kind of like shaky ground. That just came to my mind right away. Don't know why, but if you picture something like an earthquake, or like an aftershock or something like that. Think about it. I mean, no one can really predict an earthquake. I mean, maybe you can. I'm not a seismologist or whatever that word is for people who study that professionally, but uh, they would be more like an earthquake because it's like there will be a crack there, but you, you think it's safe to walk over the crack and you think it's safe to walk back and forward, but then it's like out of nowhere, it's like San Andreas opens up and you're like, whoa, where did that come from, right? So I think of that as kind of shaky ground in the sense of their emotions because they are grounded in a sense, like they'll have their acts together in terms of their surroundings, they'll have their act together like that. They they can work hard to achieve their goals like a typical earth moon. But as far as emotions, because it is a little bit of that instability there, with their emotions, they can just not snap the way that a Sagittarius moon would snap, but they can just decide out of nowhere that they're done with you and then you will not hear from them ever again. There'll be no explanation, there'll be no hint, there'll be no warning, they'll just be done. And it's because those emotions are always up and down, up and down. So if, let's say, you piss them off one day and then the next day you're fine and then three weeks later they're done with you, it's most likely because you pissed them off three weeks before and they're just like, okay, you know what, I have to end this, this is not okay. They have a tendency to criticize someone who is overly overly emotional and passionate because they just don't see the logic even though they can have deep feelings they can be a little awkward in expressing their own emotions so if someone is too emotionally overboard when dealing with someone that has a Virgo moon they are just not going to even know what to do they might decide to cut you off for that if there's an outburst or a display of anger or emotion or temper that they do not like they are not going to sit and tolerate it so with a mutable earth moon their emotions are more analytical rather than feeling so something can happen and it'll make them feel a certain way and it can cause some anxieties in the mind especially for an unevolved Virgo moon because they're still not in the realm of emotions they're in the realm of critical thinking that a feeling might come up and they just don't know what to do with it so they'll sit and they'll obsess over it so in a relationship a Virgo moon loves to have a good conversation they like to talk about any random topic they can be very quirky. They have a very unique sense of humor that you might not see unless you know them really well on an emotional level. They're somewhat guarded with their emotions just because they're not really in the realm of feeling. So if you are involved with someone who has Moon in Virgo, then it's best not to try to get them to have an emotional conversation because they're really not going to know what to do with that. It's best to just kind of let them explain things in their linear form and you can decipher what you will out of that. They're not going to be overly lovey-dovey, although they can be, but the next day they might not be and nothing even happens. But again, that's that shaky ground of the mutable. So 
It could be something that they're just in a funk that day and you might think that they're ignoring you, but they're not. They're just working out some sort of calculation in their mind of why they're in a funk that day. So they're not someone who's likely going to tell you something straightforward because it is mutable. So they're open to a lot of things. So they definitely want to think before they speak and because Virgo is ruled by Mercury and in a moon sign the moon is obviously the moon it's water Mercury is an air and earth planet so so because they're ruled by Mercury there's a tendency to jump to conclusions especially on an emotional sense because they might have a thought in their mind and run with it and think that that emotion is real but it's not it's just a thought that they had in their mind but because mercury is so fast it just kind of runs away with them which is why virgo moon can have a tendency of their thoughts just running away with them the virgo moon can also be overly self-critical if they're not evolved they do have a good head on their shoulders if they are evolved just because they'll know where everything is so even if their home is messy or their desk is messy their office whatever they'll still know where everything is they're not going to be someone that's just gonna have things scattered all over and not know what to do with it so odds are they are very neat but if they are messy they are going to have an organized mess if that makes sense so Capricorn moon is our last earth moon, our cardinal earth moon, and this is basically earth energy that is pushing its way forward. So what does that mean from an emotional standpoint? Now, Capricorn moon, not good with emotions, just not. Now, this of course depends on the planets that are aspecting the moon, what house it's in, and all of that, but they are generally not someone who is overt at expressing their emotional feelings. They are very, again, logical, like the earth moons. They can be self-critical, but they like to move forward. So they're not necessarily going to be like a Taurus moon where they want to accumulate physical security for their emotional well-being. They're more of a type to want to set groundwork for a later date because remember cardinal is moving forward earth is moving very very slow it's grounded it's very stable and slow so they are willing to make slow and steady progress if it's for the gain of the long haul rather than just accumulate short-term goals and have it now they would rather work harder and have their reward be greater so they can be very patient in that sense of building their dreams so in a relationship, a Capricorn moon is very loyal once they've committed. Remember, they're looking for things in the long haul. They don't really want something sporadic. They don't want randomness. They want someone that they can build with. So they are going to evaluate you and study you and analyze you and see if you're a good fit. So for a Capricorn moon to get into a relationship, it's more of a logical way of thinking rather than an impulsive emotional one they're they're more the type to size you up and say does this person mesh with my lifestyle or are they going to be good for me in the long run they're not someone to be frivolous with committing to someone now they of course can be frivolous if they're not looking for a relationship but in but in their mind, they're like, well, I was never serious about this person and I told them that, so there's nothing wrong with that. They're not going to make up stories. The Capricorn moon just doesn't have time or feels the need to lie to someone emotionally, especially that they're involved with. They'll tell you straightforward, listen, I'm not feeling you. They'll tell you that. And they can come off as a little cold or blunt or rude because of this, but that's not their intention. They just want someone to be straightforward with them, so that's what they do. They are not going to be the type to try to coddle and comfort you in that sense. They're more of a type to be like, well, you came to me with this problem. How are we going to fix it? They're going to want to try to fix something rather than pacify. So 
those who are more that they kind of need or want that nurturing coddling from a an emotional standpoint capricorn moon is just not even going to see eye to eye with you on that they're going to be more let's talk this out and move forward they're not going to be like oh, that's too bad okay and then no they're going to want to nip shit in the butt right away so a capricorn moon in a relationship actually wants to provide a lot for their partner they want their partner to provide stability for them as they are providing stability for their partner. They want someone who is as invested in them as they are. They don't want to deal with immaturity or childish nonsense or someone who just has bursts of anger and then is fine because the Capricorn moon doesn't operate that way so they're going to think that that person is fickle and they want to genuinely help their partner and build their partner up and build something with their partner. So in a way they can come off as maybe a bit controlling, especially emotionally. They might be the type to say, well, okay, you're feeling that way, but let's fix this and move over. They're not the type to really sit and kind of listen to you as you sort out your own emotions. They're more like, well, you told me this is what you feel, I'm giving you a solution, now what? So they're very deadpan in that sense. And they are actually someone who is very loyal and stable and honest once they are committed. They are not going to stray because they are considering, well, I built all this with this person, why is there a need to go somewhere else and start over again? So now we're going to move along to air moon signs. Now, air moon signs are similar to earth moon signs in the sense that they don't really operate in the realm of extreme emotional outbursts. They don't tend to feel their feelings as deeply. They tend to, again, in, uh, intellectualize how they're feeling. Something can make them feel a certain way and they'll want to get down to the bottom of, well, why did this happen? They'll turn it into like a mathematical equation rather than feeling the feeling. Air moons can actually have somewhat of a paranoia around emotions just because the realm of emotions to an air moon is so alien. They're not really wired that way, obviously, unless of course they have other types of aspects in their chart or whatnot, but in general, an air moon is not someone who is wired to really deal with heavy emotionally topics from an emotional level. They can deal with an emotional topic from an intellectual level very well because they'll want to have a conversation and verbalize whatever is going on so they can figure it out. But in terms of necessarily being comforting and consoling to someone else, they are kind of, they can come off aloof in that aspect. They can seem indifferent and it's not that they don't care, it's just that their way of showing compassion and caring might be different from someone else's. So an air moon's emotional reaction to something might differ to someone else's. And they can be misunderstood a lot of times because of that, just because they are not someone who is going to express something emotionally. They are going to talk to you and it's going to seem like they don't care about it, but it's just that they are not, they're, they're unsure of how to express an emotion, so they're doing what's natural for them is to be, to talk about it in a manner in which the other person understands they want that communication. They're not necessarily looking for a big hug or to console someone or something like that. They are going to explain what they want or need. So Gemini Moon, our mutable air moon, is going to be someone who, on the inside, they're very unique in the sense of their emotions, number one, they are not someone who is going to feel their emotions, and number two, they are someone who has a dualistic nature anyway because it's mutable plus it's the sign of the twins, so that's even more dualistic. So with a Gemini Moon emotions, now, they can come off very, very erratic, especially to someone who 
maybe has a more rounded emotional scale than the Gemini moon. Now, a Gemini moon, because they have so much going on on the inside, because again, they are ruled by Mercury. So Mercury and moon, they kind of have miscommunications because one is ruling air and earth, the other is ruling water, and they just might not see eye to eye. They might clash. So a Gemini moon might have issues with being uncertain of how they feel. They might not have any idea. They can definitely feel something, of course, but in terms of them interpreting it, it's going to be lost on them because number one, they're using their mind to interpret feelings, which is kind of already a mismatch. And number two, because they are the sign of the twins with that dualistic nature, a part of them might feel like this and a part of them might feel like that. So that's even more so that they're unable to really comprehend what they're feeling. So they, like the other moon signs, they have a tendency to be the type to just snap out of nowhere, especially in regards to their temper. I would not say that they have an overly horrendous temper by any means, but again, with a Gemini moon, you are not going to know what you're going to get, especially if they're angry, because they already inside themselves have some conflict where they're trying to balance, well, I feel this way and I feel that way. And then on top of it, they're trying to rationalize what they're balancing rather than feeling what they're balancing. So they are the type to have a random outburst out of nowhere and then they'll be like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. And they genuinely will say that because half of their emotions weren't there. They're only speaking or reacting from 50% of their emotions. So it's very important for a Gemini moon to have their inner world kind of in sync and to not have that inner conflict with, well, you know, the dualistic nature of, well, this this is how I'm feeling, but no, that's not how I'm really feeling. They have some issues with maybe deciphering what they're experiencing emotionally. They might not know how to articulate that into words because it needs to be felt and they are just not going to know what to do with that information. Now, a Gemini moon is a very good at having a good intellectual, uh, intellectually intimate relationship with someone. They want to know that they can have a conversation and adventures with someone. They can be very gregarious and they can be sometimes known as sneaky or a snoop or a chatterbox just because their internal run with their feelings are actually so curious about things that are going on around them that they can come off as nosy. So a Gemini moon, because they have that mutable quality, they're the type to have a conversation here, a conversation there, a conversation there. And so they can have multiple conversations, multiple relationships, things like that. And again, because it's mutable, they are able to differentiate between the different people. Like a Gemini moon is very smart and they're very shrewd. So on an emotional standpoint, especially an unevolved Gemini moon can be in multiple different relationships and no one will have any idea because with that moon in Gemini, they're so open to everything, but yet they're kind of short term that they have the capacity to do that and not think twice about it. So a Gemini moon is actually someone who is very funny and can be sarcastic and witty and very talkative and they can be someone who is just fun to be around because they kind of have a free spirit vibe. Uh, Gemini Moon is someone who they like to have a good time, they like to have good conversation. They can come off sometimes as a little bit harsh or mean just because with their emotions, if let's say someone says something to them and they didn't like it, immediately they're so quick to clap back at you and you might not have meant it in the way that they took it, but because the tendency to think without speaking, then someone with a Gemini Moon can say hurtful things and it might not even be called for in the situation. And then they'll be the type to be like, oh, I didn't mean that, it's okay. Like they have that air of 
not necessarily in impulse, but they they kind of are because they're restless and they're so quick and they so need to say something, especially an emotional standpoint. So with a Gemini moon in a relationship, if they're with someone who is just not into that, those smart remarks, then that can be another situation in itself because the Gemini moon is always going to have a quick comeback. They are going to be quick on their feet. They are going to be someone who is just going to be that spitfire and going to tell you something and later on they might realize that, you know, they said some hurtful things, but in the moment they are not even aware of it. It's like they're oblivious to their tongue, if that makes sense. So an evolved Gemini moon is very good at working with other people in the sense that they have that curiosity and that openness to actually take a personal interest in the people that are closest to them and they are someone who likes to as i said have a conversation they are not someone who is just going to sit there and be quiet they like they like to have that mental banter with someone they are not a good partner for someone who is extremely extremely introverted and likes to be left alone most of the time because moon and gemini they just they have that childlike quality where they want to be a free spirit and they are just impulsive remember they're mutable they're open to anything they'll have a conversation about anything they have a great ability to multitask they can be that person who is on their phone, listening to music, watching a movie, taking notes, running, and doing all of that at, at the same time, and they'll be okay with that. That's not going to be anything that is going to be stressful for them to do. They'd like to actually have a lot on their plate, especially emotionally, which is why an unevolved Gemini moon can be someone who is known to stir up emotional drama because if they don't have a lot going on emotionally, they their mind just naturally is looking for things to find. So they might nitpick or say something just to have something to entertain them for that moment and then they're over it and then they expect you to be over it too. So that can come off as a little bit fickle, especially to someone who is you know, more grounded on an emotional standpoint. So Libra moon is another moon sign, which is air, cardinal quality. And Libra moon is another moon sign that sort of has that inner balancing act going on. Not necessarily the way that a Gemini moon does, but a Libra moon is more of that indecisiveness because they're trying to intellectualize their feelings and a lot of the times they like to have different options in front of them so they might weigh well should I feel this way or should I feel that way do I have a right to be angry over this no I think I should be okay with that no but I think I should be angry it's a lot of that inner talk and that's just natural for anyone that has an air moon there's gonna be a lot of internal talk and you know, deciphering equations and things like that because that's what they're naturally good at. They're very quick. So a Libra moon, because it's cardinal, it's air, it's pushing things forward. The way so, that a Libra moon bonds with someone is through conversations and socializing. It might not be a very personal conversation until you really get to know them, but they can chat up anyone and they will feel emotionally fulfilled doing that. They like to have people around them. They like to have, on an emotional sense, they don't really like to be by themselves. They can be that person who is uncertain of what to do and that person who is always asking for advice because they just don't know. They want someone to kind of guide them with their emotions so they like to bounce their what they're feeling off of different people and they might of course say well should I do choice A or choice B what do you think I should do they want that that other person to be open to hearing them out so a Libra moon can actually be a good listener they are a very good talker they can talk about anything because they are ruled by Venus and Venus knows how to charm, so they can be known as kind of a smooth operator, uh, especially if they're unevolved and they can have 
two different relationships going on at once and neither will know about the other because the Libra is trying to the Libra moon is trying to figure out which one is better for me and they'll intellectualize their emotions like that now because they are worldwide Venus they can be very sensual and romantic and flirtatious especially with the Venus and moon being both feminine planets they get along really well so a Libra moon is very good at telling you what you want to hear they are not someone who really likes to start drama although of course if someone is unevolved they can but they're not someone who is going to intentionally intentionally try to stir the pot they will really try to remain balanced and emotionally backed away if they see some sort of drama they won't want to deal with that just because they find it to be not classy to have emotional drama and emotional outbursts they would rather have someone talk to them and just kind of figure out what's going on from there they can be very grandiose in their gestures of affection when they're trying to win you over just because you know a moon in Libra that's the sign Libra is the sign of love moon is emotions so they will really go out of their way to make their partner happy they are the type to be into those sentimental or cheesy romantic type of things they'll think it's fun you know even if they know they're being corny they might still do it anyway just because they enjoy that that partnership connection they enjoy that romantic connection they like to have a relationship or someone always around them who they have an interest in or who has an interest in them they are not someone who likes to necessarily be alone though they can come off as being cold in their emotions they're not going to come off as romantic in the sense of you know reciting Shakespearean sonnets to you with tears in their eyes they're more of like here's a beautiful bouquet of flowers or you know something like that and then they're not going to want to get deep they'll show you that they care but they're not going to really want to get in the depth 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 of it they would rather talk about it they wouldn't want someone to be emotionally sloppy in front of them they would rather work it out on a conversational level rather than you know have some big scene created now moon in aquarius our fixed air moon is going to be someone who is again they're fixed in their emotions so there can be a tendency for grudge holding although I would say moon in aquarius is the least likely to hold an emotional grudge although <clears throat> it can happen because remember fixed thought so a moon in, a, in aquarius fixed thought there is a lot of overthinking going on because it's if you think about it it's someone fixed in their thoughts so that can lead to ruminating if they're not careful so someone that has fixed thoughts in their emotional sense there can be something that they that was traumatic for them that happened in the past and they're so fixated on it and they're very protective of not allowing that to happen again just because the situation is so real to them now so the moon in Aquarius because they are fixed on things there's a tendency to ruminate the Aquarius moon is actually very easy going on the inside they don't mind having conversations with anyone they like to have different types of conversations not necessarily emotion based ones they again like all the air moons like to have the intellectual stimulation in a relationship if an Aquarius moon is not feeling you as someone who they can have a conversation with you might as well just leave now because it's not going to go anywhere they don't want someone who is going to really 
intrude on their privacy. They are very, very, very private and guarded with their emotions. Remember, fixed thought. So they, a lot of times, can be in their head rather than in their physical environment. So they can be someone who is sitting there with you and they're having a conversation, they're talking, but their mind is just not there. They're somewhere else, but yet they're in the act of physically speaking with you. So there can be a tendency to come off as a little bit spacey because they might just be elsewhere in their psyche, but they're physically with you. So an Aquarius moon does not want their privacy invaded. They don't want people being nosy towards them. They don't want too many questions asked of them. They are going to be someone who does not want their inner psyche interfered with. They are going to observe you first before letting you in emotionally. They are not going to be someone who is going to be overly physically affectionate. They are going to be more like, well, I'm here and I listen to you, so that should show that I care rather than, you know, displaying some sort of physical thing to, towards you. So if you are in a relationship with an Aquarius moon, they can be very loyal, especially the evolved ones, just because it's a fixed sign. So once they have made the decision that they're going to become emotionally involved with one person, then that's what they're going to do. They're not likely to stray. An Aquarius moon, if they're at that point of their life where they want to have multiple people in their life, they are not going to see anything wrong with that because they are going to look at it like, well, logically, if I'm not with this person, why would they think that I am? They're very, they can be cryptic in their dealings with people. Like an Aquarius moon, because they, they're so intelligent with that with their words and the way that they speak are very good at wording things. So, so an Aquarius moon, especially if they're unevolved, is someone who is likely to give half-truths, if you know what I mean by that. They're not someone who is going to lie to you. They are not going to feel the need to do that. But on the other hand, they're not going to feel the need to tell you their entire business either. So. It's very good to watch someone with all air moons actually, but especially with moon in Aquarius because they are fixed and they are very, very deep. They are going to be good at wording something in a way where if you took that as the way you took that, that's on you. They know what they said. They know their intention when they said it. They know how they said it. They're, they're not going to even argue with you. They're going to be like, yeah, I said that. Now what? So with someone who is with an uninvolved Aquarius moon, at least dealing with them on an emotional level, it might be a little tricky to navigate those waters because you just, you have to really look for their nonverbal cues. That's the biggest thing with a moon in Aquarius. So when they do want to be committed to someone, they are very loyal. They are someone who will be your best friend. They want to have interesting conversations with you. They want to have adventures with you. They are not going to really look elsewhere for anyone else. If they are someone who, unless you're really providing them with like a lot of drama or stress, there's really no need for them to stray. They're kind of like, well, I'm here, I committed to it, and that's what it is. But they are the type also, because they are ruled by Uranus, that they can be abrupt as well. So if one day they just decide, you know what, I'm not feeling this anymore, they will tell you, listen, I'm done up and leave and and you're not going to convince them to stay because they've already made that decision so they can be very abrupt in that manner of their emotions you might not see something coming and then out of nowhere that's what it is so that is definitely something to look out for when dealing relationship wise with someone that has moon in aquarius you want to be certain of that, that their words and your words are on the same page. You want to reiterate that. You don't want some miscommunication because they are not the type that's going to back down. They will sit there and have a debate with you and say, no, but I said this and I know what I meant when I said it. It's not my problem if you misinterpreted what I said. And 
they'll be like that. So that is why they can come off as a little blunt and a little cold because they're not going to mince their words to make someone else feel better. They, they just, they don't have time for that. They're not going to see any type of logic or reasoning why they're going to do that. They are not someone who is going to be overly rude. They're not going to intentionally try to be rude to someone, but just because they're so straightforward with their words, that can be seen as negative by someone who is, you know, looking for something a little more soothing in their communication. So that is it for our moon sign video. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I went through all 12 moon signs, so I, I have a feeling it might be a little bit on the longer side. And I'll put timestamps below so that you can see which one you know is yours if you don't want to watch the whole thing. But if you watch the whole thing and you enjoyed, then thank you. And I hope that you got some information off of that. Remember, disclaimer as always, every moon sign is different, every person is different, everyone is so unique that it's impossible to compare anyone to anyone else. But I do want to say that house placements, planets aspecting the moon, all of that jazz that does come into effect when interpreting the moon sign personality. So I will link the free astrology birth chart calculator in the description of this video so that if you don't know your moon sign you can find it out and see what house it's in and that exciting stuff. So that's basically it for this video. I'm Oculus the alien next door and thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, thank you for sharing this video, thank you for liking this video or commenting or whatever you want to do. Thank you if you just watched this and enjoyed it and you got some good information out of it. Have a wonderful rest of your day and as always, peace, good vibes, and namaste blessed.